Hello and welcome back everybody, today we're going to do Marvel Rivals on Arc GPU. From the A310 to the A770 for the A variant and the B580 from the B variant. Welcome to Respond PC, I'm Dunk, let's game on! With every tester we're going to use the i5-12600K, 32GB of RAM and we're going to play at 1080p at different settings, at least for the lowest end card. And talking about the lowest end card, start off with the A310 at 1080p, the lowest setting possible and XCSS balance, we don't even have to go lower than balance to get an average of 47 fps. That is really nice as the lowest Intel Arc GPU can actually play the game. And because of the look cartoonish of the game, lowest settings don't look that bad. The GPU is big at 99%, that's what we want, we're using 4.4GB of VRAM, so we're using 400MB from the system RAM. The CPU is in the mid-20s, so we're not bottlenecked by the CPU, and we're using 16.6 to 17GB of RAM, so 16 is a bit low. And the frame time graph is quite smooth. Next up, we have the Arc A380. We now have a 6GB of VRAM to play with, but the only modification I did in the settings was moving XCSS from balance to ultra quality. Everything stayed the same, 1080p and low. That was enough to almost max out the VRAM of the card, using 5.6 out of 6GB of VRAM. The GPU is still pegged at the 99% of the position, CPU is still the same as with the A310, and we're still using 16.3GB of RAM. So the A380 only have a better XCSS choice over the A310. Still highly playable and the frame time graph is uh, still in the smooth area. Next up we have the Intel Arc A580, still at 1080p but this time I was able to push uh, the settings to high and keep XCSS at ultra quality. Even though the B580 is out right now, the A580 is still my favorite card for 1080p. Let's review that opinion when the B570 uh, come out, but for now the A580 is my best Intel card for 1080p. So the A580 at 1080p high settings ultra XCSS give us an average of 59 FPS with high of 62 and low of 56. It run really smoothly. But I noticed that the GPU is not pegged at 100%. We are hovering in the 85. But when I try to play a bit with the settings, so jumping from high to ultra, the FPS drop and the GPU utilization didn't change, still in the mid 80s. Not sure what I'm doing wrong here. Anyway, it worked and the gameplay is smooth. Next card in the lineup, uh, the A750. I have the Elden Ring edition, if that uh, help anything. We are now playing at the ultra settings, still at XCSS ultra quality, but we kept the resolution of 1080p. We get an average of 62 FPS uh, and using 7.1 GB of VRAM out of 8. CPU utilization stay the same and RAM utilization stay the same also. And if you don't want the uh, XCSS ultra quality, you can have XCSS native. You get a little drop in FPS, getting an average of 60, not much any difference. The frame time graph is uh, stably smooth and we get a similar, I won't call that an issue, but more like a behavior as the A580. We're not pegged at 100%, we are in the mid 90s this time. Not sure why I cannot use the entire power of the GPU to give me some more FPS. Next up we have the Arc A770 LE. Still testing at 1080p but now at ultra settings and XCSS native. And I get a similar result as the A750 at native. So we're now we are at 57 FPS for this map. GPU utilization is still hovering in the mid 90s but uh, this time we're using 9.6 gigabyte of VRAM but this card is supposed to be a 1440p uh, GPU so we're going to test it against the B580 a bit later because at 1080p a770 or A750, you better pay less for the A750. And now finally the B580. I finally got my hand on one after I pre-order almost every model that I can find. I found one open box in store. The one that I got is the ASRock Challenger and it was already an open box in store. So I got it for 235 USD. Got it cheaper than the reference card. Anyway, I digress. The B580 at 1080p is not a good option. 
output that 1080p just to compare it to all the other cards of ARC, but it fare worse than the A770 and even the A750, getting even close to the A580. At 1080p ultra settings and XCSS native, we get an average of 48 FPS, but the B580 from Intel was targeted at 1440p. Even though the GPU is currently pegged at 98% of its position, using 9.5 out of 12 GB of VRAM, and even using 18.2 GB of RAM. Anyway, let's jump to 1440p to see if it, uh, it is really worth it. Now 1440p, back to the A770 LE, just to give us a baseline uh, on the performance versus the B580. I had to drop the settings to high from Hiltra and keep XCSS at native. The A770 was finally able to give us 99% utilization of the GPU and using 11 GB of VRAM out of 16. But with all that, we get an average FPS of 45. CPU utilization didn't move much and the RAM utilization we are in the 17 to 18 gigabyte of RAM. So that will be our baseline to check the B580 at 1440p. And finally the B580 at 1440p where the card should belong in terms of resolution. At the same setting as the A770 we are at high XCSS native. GPU is pegged at 98% of utilization using 8.6 to 9 gigabyte of VRAM. We're using less VRAM than the A770. But we get a good uplift from the A770. We gain about 10 FPS from 45 to 54. And if you want to reach your 60 FPS plus, you need to down XCSS from native to ultra quality. For CPU utilization, we stay the same. And for the RAM, we using a little bit less compared to the A770. Regardless, it's way cheaper than the A770 for a bit more performance. I guess my favorite Intel R card for 1440p is no more the A770 but the B580. Let's see if the B570 will dethrone the A580 for the 1080p position. And that's all I had for the Intel Arc on Marvel Rivals. Thanks to have come watch my first video on Arc GPU and my first video with the B580 for 2025. See you in the next one and subscribe.